Hey, welcome home and welcome to Sweeter Than Honey. Today, I would like to invite you to our What is Happening Around the World Corner, where I share news concerning in America and news, something of news that's happening around the world. One thing that's happened in America that's been kind of uh, a hot topic is in a surprise move Wednesday, the Biden administration and the home, Department of Homeland Security posted an announcement that it had waived 26 federal laws to permit further construction of the border walls in Star County, Texas, an area it says is seeing high legal entry. And this topic of news is sensitive because of the many things that's been happening with a lot of uh, Im- illegal immigrants or immigrants seeking refugees and uh, and sanct- uh, sanctuaries in, in New York and many places around the country. And so that's something that's been happening in America. Another thing, the big thing that's been happening around the world that you heard is was happening in Israel and Gaza. So around dawn on Saturday, Hamas militants launched a surprise attack on Israel. They broke through the barrier between Gaza and Israel, driving trucks to occupy nearby Israeli villages where they killed both soldiers and civilians and took a significant number of Israeli hostages according to the Israeli Defense Force. At the same time, Hamas launched thousands of rockets and and an attack by sea. The Israeli military was caught by surprise and took several hours to respond. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu then declared that his country was at war and promised the enemy will pay a price for all this. And Israel cut power to Gaza, mobilized tens of thousands of reservists, and launched a barrage of missiles. Fighting continued throughout the weekend with the death of both sides reaching over 1,500, at least 11 Americans among the dead. So who is the Hamas or what is Hamas? Hamas is an Islamist militant group that controls the Gaza Strip in Palestine. It is designated as a terrorist organization by the United States and has clashed with Israel for years. A spokesperson for Hamas said that this attack was because it wanted the international community to stop atrocities in Gaza against Palestinian people and their holy sites, which has also been an issue with many Palestinians dying the past years um, unlawfully and unjustly. And the reaction has been very mixed, but the attack has been, you know, drawn widespread condemnation from leaders around the globe, including President Biden, who said his administrator's administration's support for Israel's security is rock solid and unwavering. And the U.S. is sending initial military aid and additional support. Um, and additional support to Israel, but um, there's also sides that said that you know this whole Israel and Palestine, Palestine, and Israel and Gaza affair has been it's very tricky, it's very it's very complicated, and um, at this time um, there's a lot of emotions flying high concerning this, and so maybe continue to pray for all of this. Maybe continue to things that are happening in our country, but also happening around the world, and maybe continue to pray that the peace that only Christ can give us may come down on this earth that might may christ's peace just cover every inch of this earth so that we might find uh, joy and happiness as we live together on this earth so with that let us go and read our god's words for today which comes from first kings chapter 15 verse 9 through 24 first kings chapter 15 verse 9 through 24 we will read from the nrsv so please carefully follow along and hear the word of the lord in the 20th year of king jeroboam of israel asa began to reign over judah he reigned 41 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Makkah, daughter of Abishalom. Asa did what was right in the sight of the Lord, and as his father David had done. He put away the illicit priests out of the land and removed all the idols that his ancestors had made. He also moved his mother Makkah from being queen mother because she had made an ad- abominable image for Asherah. Asa cut down her image and burned it at the Wadi Kidron. But the High places were not taken away. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was true to the Lord all his days. He brought into the house of the Lord the votive gifts of his father and his own votive gifts, silver, gold, and utensils. There was a war between Asa and King Basha of King Israel, King of Israel all their days. King Basha of Israel went up against Judah and built Ramah to prevent anyone from going or out or coming to King Asa of Judah. Then Asa took all the silver and gold that were left in the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house and gave them into the hands of his servants. King Asa sent them to the king ben son of Tab- Tabrimon, son of Hazo- Hazion, son of Aram, who resided in Damascus, saying, let there be an alliance between you and me, like that between my father and your father. 
I am sending you a present of silver and gold. Go break your alliance with King Basha of Israel so that he may withdraw from me. Ben-Hadad listened to King Asa and sent the commanders of his armies against the cities of Israel. He conquered Ejon, Dan, Iber, Beth, Makkah, and all Chinnereth, with all the land of Naphtali. When Basha heard of it, he stopped building Ramah and lived in Tizra. Then Tirza. Then King Asa made a proclamation to all Judah. None was exempt. They carried away the stones of Ramah and its timber with which Basha had been building. With them, King Asa built Giba, son of ben- Giba, Benjamin, and Mizpah. Mizpah. Now the rest of all the acts of Asa and all his power, all that he did, and all the cities that he built, are they not written in the book of the annals, king of Judah? But in his old age, he was diseased in the foot. Then Asa slept with his ancestors and was buried with his ancestors in the city of his father David. His son Jehoshaphat succeeded him. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yesterday we learned about King Abijam and how he only ruled for three years and he failed to follow God's words like David. But today we have his son, King Asa, who ruled for 41 years, which was equivalent to seven Israel kings in the north, which means Asa ruled for a very long time. And right away we see that Asa does what many kings have failed to do. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord like King David. And there are four things that Asa did that really set him on the right path. First, he expelled the cult prostitutes. Second, he removed all the idols that his predecessors had set up. Third, he deposed the idolatrous queen mother. And fourth, destroyed the queen's mother's cult image of Ashura. And he also brought, and so these are the things that Asa did that really pleased God and that kind of said, that really um, indicated that he was like David at this time. Uh, but he and also brought back the gifts of the temple of the Lord like Solomon did. And he brought it back in all the gold, silver, and utensils. But one of the things that our passage talks about that King Asa did was take the gold again and silver to bribe Ben-Hadad of Syria and to help fight against Israel. And this will later on, if you read Chronicles, this will will later on be a problem because he is addressed. They say, you trusted king of Syria, not God. And so Asa wasn't perfect, and yet he did the best that he could to follow God. And so today I wanted to focus, uh, not just overall that, you know, at the end of the day, maybe Asa did have his shortcomings and his failings, but the things that he did well. And one of the things that he did well was he completely cut off everything that was not God. And so what he did was he... Put away all the cults, the prostitutes, the image, removed all the idols, the imageries. He took down everything and he really pointed all the all of, all of their uh, perspective and their sight and what their eyes back on God. And so he completely turned away from those things into God. And so something that we tell ourselves is um, we have this thing where we have. We want to follow God, but we aren't able to. And we find ourselves struggling to follow God because um, we ask ourselves, you know, what's the problem? The problem is that we haven't really turned away from our idols or our sins. If money, if money or say that if lying is something that that is, that is on your heart, if, if if fame is something that you've set yourself an idol, um, you can't serve both fame and God. You have to turn, completely turn away from fame. You have to cut off from your life and you have to only follow God. And so today, EMS, we ask ourselves, uh, like King Asa, that are we able to really uh, cut off the things that we've made into images and idols? And are we able to truly follow God faithfully and full? Heartedly, and therefore are we able to worship God and glorify God in the ways that He deserves, or are we still kind of trying to do the both God and mentality where we want to serve God and something else? Let's pray. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for this time. Father, we first ask for peace all around the world, and we also ask that you would continue to help us to be faithful to you, help us to uh, cut away all our idols so that we might be able to follow you faithfully and full-heartedly. We thank you so much. In Jesus Christ, let me pray. Amen.